about him as always.
Tears are falling, hearts are breaking. How we need to hear from God. You've been promised, we've been waiting. Welcome, holy child. Welcome, holy child. Hope that you don't mind our manger. How I wish we would have known. But long waited, holy stranger, make yourself at home. Please make yourself at home. And bring your peace into our violence. Bid our hungry souls be filled. Word now breaking, heaven silence. Welcome to our world. Welcome to our world. Fragile fingers sent to heal us. Tender brow prepared for thorn. Tiny heart whose blood will save us. Unto us is born, unto us is born. So wrap our injured flesh around you, breathe our air and walk our sod. Rob our sin and make us holy, perfect Son of God. Perfect Son of God, welcome to our world. Welcome to Christmas Eve 2020, uh, different than any other Christmas Eve we've ever done before in so many ways. Typically, our family would offer you um, a special song with all five of us, and uh, there are only two of us here tonight with COVID and the pandemic and all that good stuff, but we're still here together, uh, either in the room or probably most of us actually are online this evening watching. So we welcome you into the presence of the Holy Spirit. Would you join me as we pause for a moment and open our lives up to God's moving? Almighty God, we give thanks that you are not a God who stands far away. You're a God who comes close, so close that you said, I know the number of hairs on your head. I've numbered your days. But you're also a God of amazing power, the God who was and is and is to come. Before all that we see was, you were. And after any of us have breathed our last and gone, you will be. So this evening we celebrate what it's like for you to come close to us and for us to come close to you. Be with us, God, as in one sense the waiting is just about over on the calendar. And yet in another sense we know the calendar doesn't always dictate when it turns cold or warm and when things get worked out. So we wait. We celebrate. You've come. You're coming. You'll come again. But we also are in the midst of the waiting. We welcome you tonight. May you find each of us preparing room for you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, we pray, and God's people said, amen. So we have reached the end of Advent and Christmas, and we're going to invite the Hicks family to come and to uh, light the candles for us. We get to light all four of the single candles, including the little tiny nub that's been just doing a lot of work since week one like a sharpened pencil getting shorter and shorter, but we also get to light the Christ candle tonight, being reminded of His coming to us.
Thanks, Hudson. Join me, if you would, as we listen to part of the Christmas story from Luke chapter 2. Born a Savior. There were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. The shepherds came in contact with the baby, and they were excited. They had to tell somebody else. The wise men sometime later see the star in the sky, and they have to come and worship, and they bring gifts. What do you bring tonight to the manger? I invite you to worship the Lord in humility, in seeking. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Bow down before him, his glory proclaim. With gold of obedience and incense of lowliness, kneel and adore him. The Lord is his name. Fear not to enter his presence in poverty, bearing no gifts to present as your own. Bring truth in its beauty and love in purity. These are the offerings to lay at his throne. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Bow down before him, his glory proclaim. With gold of obedience and incense of lowliness, kneel and adore him, the Lord is his name. What is it about light? What is it about light that draws us? Um, we can answer that question from a variety of ways. We could answer it from a, an ophthalmological standpoint, uh, from a neurological standpoint. We could look at the eyes. We could look at the brain. Um, and we could say that when the eyes see light, the cones, the rods receive the light waves and send a signal into the brain for processing. Uh, we could answer the question, why are we drawn to light from a psychological standpoint? Um, some would say it's not the light itself, it's really the contrast. If you're surrounded by light, light not, may not be a big deal, but go into a place that's dark and now you notice light and you're drawn to it, right? Uh, we could give a sociological, anthrop anthropological uh, answer. Um, for centuries and millennia, people across the geographical spectrum 
have been um, running from dark. They don't want to hang out in the dark for the most part. They want to be in the light. They're looking to overcome the darkness. Unless you're looking to sleep. Um, maybe we should turn the house lights up when the sermon starts. I don't know. Um, but if you're looking to sleep or you're looking to do something wrong, those are times you might want darkness. But for the most part, we're seeking not darkness but light. And we could give answers from our language. Uh, our word pictures talk about light and darkness. We've been describing 2020, and a lot of us are starting to say we see a light at the end of the tunnel, right? We think eventually this is going to end. Um, we know that if you're the dark horse or the, or, or the, the person who's not the favorite, you're easily overlooked. Um, so there's dark that we can't see and light that we can. Whatever it is that draws us, whatever is the reason for the answer, um, we are drawn to light. A friend of mine earlier this season, in the midst of the pandemic, posted something on Facebook. And, uh, and she said this. She said, a lot of us decorated for Halloween. Did you notice that? There's a lot of Halloween decorating this year, more maybe than ever. And she said, uh, what do you think? Do you think we can make such a great effort at Christmas too? Well, here's a question I have for you. And I'm interested in you taking a pop quiz. You thought school was out, some of you. Um, you think I'm, I'm in, in person, not on Zoom, and I'm still having to do school? Kind of. But uh, I'd like for you to take a, a pop quiz, one question, okay? If you're in the room, you need uh, some great technology. You need your thumbs. If you're online watching on Facebook, uh, you can give us either more or less. Those are your choices, okay? Get your, get your clickers ready. You ready? One question. Would you say this year sales of Christmas lights are down over last year or up over last year? Answer. Okay? Um, the answer is they are up at least from the scientific data I've seen. Here are two, um, two places I saw, or two, two stories I saw a little bit of information about. One statistic said sales of Christmas lights are up nearly 20% nationwide in 2020. That makes sense, 2020, 20%. And, uh, and so they said many people started decorating for Christmas early this year, some even before Thanksgiving. That was one story. And then today I thought, well, I've got one source. I'd, look, I'd like a second source, just a corroborating source. Uh, the good news is they were able to cor corroborate the direction, up, not down, but the number was astronomical. The first one, remember I said, what was the percentage this year over last year? 20, okay? According to the second source, sales of st strings of Christmas lights are up, listen to this, 194%. Not just an increase in decorations, but lights. Retailers like Lowe's said that they have had customers coming into the building starting as early as August and saying, do you have Christmas lights? People were looking to do Christmas lights and decorations this year. Now, we could speculate about that, right? We could speculate about the pandemic, about the economic downturn, about the political divide. Uh, we could talk about, are they looking for, uh, for easing their psyche? Are they wanting to just find something that brings them joy and warmth? What is it? Well, we could talk about that, but, but it seems from these two sources, numbers are definitely up. Um, I know uh, at the Crowder household, our boss told me to put more lights out on the house than last year. And so I did. And now it's more sloppiness, just a, not a little bit of sloppiness. It's a lot of, of sloppiness. I don't know. Maybe not. But uh, Tammy said, I'm looking to start a movement where we can leave our lights up through the month of January. I don't know if you're with her or not, but if you are, sign on. The point is, we want light. We want to be around light. But not only do we want to be around it, we need it. If the power went out right now, wherever you're at, in your home or in the church, we would go around feeling our way out of here, wouldn't we? We'd want to avoid the chairs and the walls and each other. It wouldn't be a pretty sight if we start bonking heads as we're trying to get out the door. We don't just want light. We do. We need it. And it's not just in that way physically. There are other ways. Our body needs vitamin D. Um, we need the warmth. We need the energy. We need the brightness. But at the risk of sounding too much like an infomercial, wait, there's more. If you'll allow me, I'll take a moment of pastoral privilege and say Scripture talks about light. Now, when you think about the Christmas story, we have our nativity scene over on this side of the sanctuary, you think of shepherds, and you think of angels, and you think of Mary and Joseph and the baby. And, uh, and the Gospels of Matthew and Luke give us those characters. If, that's, if you want that sort of 
of story, that's where you go. You go to Matthew and Luke for your shepherds and angels and Mary and Joseph and the baby. John tells a Christmas story in a totally different way. At the center of his story is light. Listen to part of John chapter 1. You won't catch it right away, but once you start hearing it, you'll start hearing it everywhere. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and without Him, not one thing is made that came into being. In Him was life, and here it comes, and that life was the light of people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness could not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all people might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave the power to become children of God. So the light is the center of John's story. The word, the light. The wise men come, as we talked about. They saw a light in the sky, and they followed that light. They were looking for a king. The light of the star led the wise men to the light of the world. People are naturally drawn to light. When you leave here tonight, how many of you will go west that direction? How many of you, in going west, at some point this Christmas season, have noticed the giant Christmas tree just down the road, right? I don't know about you, but I love, when I'm coming home from Ann Arbor or Ypsilanti or Detroit metropolitan area. I love it when I get off of 94 going west and I pull up on that ramp. I've been going 70 or so miles an hour. And I've been kind of jostling back and forth with traffic. And when I get off, I start to feel stress just melt away. Partly because I'm not having to go 70 or more on the interstate. Partly because I'm not having to jostle. Partly because I'm getting close to home. But I'll tell you, as I get off in the dark in this season, I love looking at that tree. Don't you? Matter of fact, I love looking at that tree so much, as many times as I've been down down old US 12, I, I can't tell you what's on the opposite side of the road. Why? Because when we get close to that area, our eyes automatically go to the light on the tree. That's the way we are with light. We're drawn to it. Many of us have made pilgrimages in the back of an SUV or a minivan to Michigan International Speedway this Christmas season to see five miles of Christmas lights. Or maybe you've gone to the Wayne County light display. Or maybe you've headed up to Frankenmuth and seen why. Why? Why? Because we love the light. As exciting as it is to see the light... Have you ever been around a a Christmas tree or a house that had lights on them and then somehow one of those strings of lights just gave out? That's depressing. When you've worked hard to dress a tree, you put it up, you put the lights on it, you put the ornaments on it, maybe you had some ribbon or some popcorn or some tinsel, and then as you sat down to enjoy it, part of the strand goes out. That's a horrible feeling, isn't it? Why? Because we love the light. We're drawn to the light. We love the beauty of the light. And the invitation of the gospel this evening is for us to receive the light and then to reflect the light. Remember the old Sunday school song, This Little Light of Mine? I'm going to let it shine. C.S. Lewis, in his watershed book, Mere Christianity, describes the gospel this way. He said, the gospel is a radical and engaging vision of our place in the cosmic drama. If we let him, for we can prevent him, but if we choose to let him, God will make the feeblest and the filthiest of us into a dazzling, radiant, immortal creature, pulsating 
all through such energy and joy and wisdom and love as we cannot now imagine. A bright, stainless mirror that reflects glory back to God. His own boundless power and delight and goodness. And then he ends with this. The process will be long and sometimes painful, but that is what we are in for. Nothing less. End quote. Did you hear those words? Bright, dazzling, radiant, reflect. It's the imagery of light. Now, I can hear it in some of your minds right now. That's fine for you, preacher. If that works for you, great. But that's not me. That makes me think of one of our favorite movies in the last few years, Polar Express. You know the story, right? Little guys are hopping on the train, heading to the North Pole to see Santa. There are some believers on the train, but there are some skeptics on the train, too. And the one little guy at one point says, Christmas never works out for me. Maybe you would say that tonight. Faith just hasn't worked out for me. Christmas just hasn't worked out for me. Wishing on a star and trying to believe that even though it's far, he'll find me Christmas Eve. With Santa's sleigh bells ring, I listen all around. The herald angels sing, I never hear the sound. Like that boy, some of you are thinking, I just don't hear it. I don't see the light. And it's frustrating, isn't it, when you have friends or family who are surrounded by the light. It seems like the light of faith is so exciting to them, and you think, I don't get that. That's just not me. Can I suggest to you, maybe this is the year. Maybe this is the time. Maybe this is the moment. Wouldn't it be great to look back in 2021? By the way, I have a theory. Uh, most years it's difficult for us to write a check or change the number the last digit of the year, we forget. I have a feeling we're going to be quick to drop that zero <laughs> and do 2021 pretty easily. Maybe this is the year. What if you could look back in 2021 and say Christmas 2020 was just as different as the rest of the year, but in the best way ever? What if in this moment the Spirit was speaking to you and you were willing and able to respond Maybe this is the year extra lights are being put up. Maybe this is the year extra effort is being made. Maybe this is the year of all years. There's an old hymn that invites us. Come to the light, it is shining for thee. Sweetly the light has dawned upon me. Once I was blind, but now I can see the light of the world is Jesus. We're creatures that seek the light, the true light. And there are times like this year, like this night, like this moment, when maybe we become more aware of ever than ever our need for the warmth, the illumination, the energy, the beauty of the light. What kind of light would you be? Now, some of us are LEDs. We're bright, shining, new colors, long-lasting. Some of us are old-school colors, right? Some of you prefer the old colors. Some of us are the twinkling lights. Some of us are flickering to some kind of a beat or a rhythm. Some of us are just steady. Turn me on and I'll be there. Some of us are kind of dim or missing a few bulbs. <laughs> Whatever your place is in this season, you're invited. Let your light shine. Let earth receive her king. Let's pray. I'd like to give you a few seconds of silence and invite you to respond to whatever it is you're hearing and seeing right now. As you're praying, here are a few prayers that maybe one of them fits you. Try it on and see if it expresses where you're at tonight. Maybe you feel like a mix. You feel like belief and unbelief are just mixed together in you. Maybe sometimes you think unbelief really has the upper hand, but in this moment, for whatever reason, you just feel like you're kind of curious about the idea of belief. If that's where you're at tonight, would you just pray this prayer? I am a mix. I believe. Help my unbelief. That's... That's a paraphrase of a prayer from the Bible. You're not alone. You're not the first person to feel that. And guess what? You probably won't be the last.
Would you pray that tonight? I'm a mix. I believe, or at least I want to believe, help my unbelief. Maybe your prayer tonight is, is cosmic. It's, it's massive. And, and you would say, we are ready for Christ to come and make all things new. So you'd say that to him tonight. We're ready for you to come, O oh Christ, and make all things new. Is that your prayer? Or maybe your prayer is intensely personal. It's just Jesus and you in this moment. And you'd say, oh, come to my heart, Lord Jesus. There is room in my heart for you. Is that your prayer? Oh, come to my heart, Lord Jesus. There is room in my heart for you. Or maybe you resonate with the book of Hebrews that says, for many generations, God, you've been speaking in many ways, but now you're speaking again in a fresh, personal way. I want to say yes to that. Whatever your prayer tonight, let earth receive her king. God, use this moment to be forming us and shaping us, making us into followers of yours. We pray now the prayer you taught your followers to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Christmas is not meant to be a spectator sport. Um, faith is not meant to be simply watched. It's meant to be engaged, to get your hands and your feet involved. So my prayer for you is that if you've been unengaged, you'd engage. Or if you've been disengaged for a time, you'd re-engage. Let earth receive her king. It came upon the midnight clear, that glorious song of old. From angels bending near the earth to touch their harps of gold. Peace on the earth, goodwill to men from hands of gracious King. The world in solemn stillness lay to hear the angels sing. And he beneath life's crushing load whose forms are bending low, who toil along the climbing way with painful step and slow. Look up for glad and golden hours come swiftly on the wing. Oh, rest beside the weary road and hear the angels sing. For lo, the days are hastening on prophet bards foretold when with the ever circling years comes round the age for gold when peace shall over all the earth its ancient splendor fling and the whole world give back the song which now the angels sing. I invite you to join me as we read together Salvation in His Name. 
You are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. There is no other name under heaven by which we must be saved. I am the Alpha and the Omega. The first and the last. I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the good shepherd. The resurrection and the life. The bright morning star. I am the living one. I was dead and behold, I am alive forever and ever and I hold the keys of death and Hades. lay down his sweet head the stars in the sky look down where he lay the little lord jesus asleep on the hay the cattle are lowing the baby awakes but Jesus, no crying he makes. I love thee, Lord Jesus. Look down from the sky and stay by my cradle till morning is nigh. Be near me, Lord Jesus, I ask thee to stay. Close by me forever and love me, I pray. Bless all the dear children in thy tender care and fit us for heaven to live with thee there. I invite you to uh, take your bread and cup, the communion packet, and prepare it now. We don't usually do communion with these tiny little plastic things, but so we don't have to be in each other's face. This is the way we've been doing it for the last few months. Uh, among the things that we'll leave and I will not be sorry about, here's one of them. We use this at Silver Maples, and um, if young hands have a hard time peeling back the film, older hands really do. So uh, the first, the first, uh, first day we used it at, at Silver Maples, I was fearful there were going to be 30 people who needed help getting it open. There was one, it was me, so uh, anyway. <clears throat> the, um, the cross casts a shadow on the manger. You, you, don't, you, don't have, you don't have the cross without the manger. You don't have the manger without the cross. They, they go together in the story. Um, not exactly bookends, because there's the tomb that's empty and, and, and uh, what comes after, but, but the cross casts a shadow on the manger. And um, it's a pretty amazing. On the one hand, as we talked about tonight, Christmas has cosmic pieces to it. There's light and there's darkness. There's life and there's death. But it's not all cosmic, is it? Because there's, there's a baby with a name and a place. Uh, in the song we sang at the beginning, Chris Rice writes, Fragile Fingers 
sent to heal us. Tender brow prepared for thorns. Tiny heart whose blood would save us unto us is born. And Christmas is a story of invitation. God invites us, but then we turn around and say, so wrap our injured flesh around you. Breathe our air. Walk our sod. Rob our sin and make us holy, perfect son of God. On the night he was betrayed, he took the bread. He gave thanks for it. He broke it. And he said, this is my body, broken for you. Take and eat. In a similar way, he took the cup. And he said, this is my blood poured out for the forgiveness of your sins. But not just yours. Those of the whole world. Take and drink. Next one in unison, your light has come. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. Nations, Nations will come, come to your light, light and kings, kings to the brightness, brightness of, of your dawn. dawn. Your, your God, God will be your glory, and, and your days, days of sorrow will end. end. This is for a lot of us um, the highlight of the evening. The lights are going to go off in just a moment. And um, it seems to me, we've said so many things about 2020, it's cliched now, but maybe we can understand the people walking in darkness a little better than we could at the beginning of the year. Maybe we can understand a little bit better um, what it's like to be longing and waiting for the light to come. Um, in just a moment, Jan and Bruce are going to come and light their candles, and they'll pass them on to you. We ask that you would tip the candle that is not burning. That way the wax will stay upright. And on the fourth stanza, I invite you, if you would, to raise your light. Silent night, holy night, Come, all is bright round yon virgin, mother and child, holy infant so tender and mild, sleep in heavenly peace. Silent night, holy night, shepherds quake at the sight, glory stream from heaven afar, heavenly hosts sing out. Savior is born. Silent night, holy night, wondrous star, lend thy light with the angels. Let us see. Hallelujah to our King, Christ the 
Savior is born. Christ the Savior is born. Son of God, he loves pure light, radiant beams from thy holy face, with the dawn of redeeming grace, Jesus, Lord, at thy birth. Um, actually, we weren't at Silver Maples. I was on Zoom with Silver Maples, part of Silver Maples that I'm thinking about. And um, one of my friends there said, this is the first time this week it's felt like Christmas. Um, I don't know what it feels like for you. I'm guessing 2020 or have had moments that did not feel right. But the good news of the gospel Do you have a a symbol tonight in your hand, a pointer, a marker? The gospel does not stop when it gets dark. Matter of fact, just the opposite. Sometimes it's easy to see the light in the darkest moments. The Son of God loves pure light, and he longs to replicate his his self, his life in you. So hear the words of Jesus from Luke 5. Let your light shine before people, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. May you do that this Christmas season and in 2020. We pray this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and God's people said, Amen. Amen. And tonight, Merry Christmas. Go in peace.